I'm back. Are you ready for some fun? Mmm, yum. Mmm, root beer float. So I am Kristen Song, and I am back. So if you're not on Facebook, then you probably missed. Um, I had breast cancer surgery on Friday. So today is my first day at uh, washing my hair in four days. <laughs> so feeling more like myself and happy to be back. I missed you guys. So we are working on the two scoops bench pillow. And today I thought we could do three packets. That's my plan. Three packets today. So they're all small popsicles. That's why I'm having a popsicle. Are you having a popsicle? <laughs> These are really good. Mm, yummy. So three popsicles. If you have that really huge hoop, I think it's like 10 and a half by 16 or something. Um, I could be wrong on that, but those with the Luminaire or Solaris, you have that big monster hoop. There's probably something similar in other brands. I don't know. So I'm going to try and fit it all in one hooping. A less stressful option is to do it in two hoopings. Um, whatever works, you can do them in three hoopings. Absolutely. But the final cut size on all three of these is four and a half by four and a half. So it is doable. The only negative is that the, the background fabrics are larger, which means they could get in the way. So we'll have to be careful about that if you choose to do um, all three in one hooping. But anyway, let's see how it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about all three blocks today. Um, one of them does have some special cut instructions, but for the most part, they are quick, easy blocks. And like I said, I've missed it. So I've missed my machine. I've missed playing. I've been um, organizing embroidery files for the last few days after my surgery to just relax and take it easy. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. So twin popsicle. We're starting section two now that we have section one complete. So section two, twin popsicle. It is on page 20 of our PDF. And we're going to start with our main fabric and it is the white hound's tooth, white on white hound's tooth. And we're going to start with this at six and a half by six and a half for our main fabric. And like I say on all of these, I highly recommend backing it with feasible stabilizer and then also be careful on these lighter ones. You want to make sure that you're using the correct side when you start your embroidery. So you would lay it down with the right side up, which is the side that doesn't have the feasible stabilizer. You could, a little tip, you could cut your fusible stabilizer a quarter inch in, and then you could easily tell which side is which side, but it, it should work fine on this. You can see the, the hound's tooth on there. So six and a half by six and a half for our main fabric. And then we have one simple applique piece. So this is what I was saying as far as cutting it a tiny bit smaller. So see how I have a little bit of an edge on here. Um, that helps you to know which side and you could do that on the white fabrics too. It just makes it a little bit simpler to see them. Um, so anyway, our one applique piece is this um, very light apple green, lime green maybe, um, very light colored. And we are going to start with this at three and a half by four, three and a half, four, three and a half by four for our one applique piece. And then we have batting. So whenever we quilt, we use batting. And our batting, we always do it a half inch larger than the final cut size. So the final cut size, like I said, is four and a half by four and a half. So that means we want a piece of batting that is five by five, five by five for your batting. And it doesn't have to be exact. Like I've said in the other tutorials, you can cut it a little bit larger. It, it doesn't matter because we're going to trim it anyway, but you do want it to be at least large enough that it's going to tack it down. So five by five on your batting. This is for the twin popsicle. And we're going to quilt this. So I am going to use uh, the food four, food four. So we're going to use the quilting size four by four, because like I said, our final cut size is four and a half by four and a half. So that means that we want a quilting design that is a half inch smaller. So four by four for our quilting design. So that'll be cute. It's the one with, um, it looks like scoops on it scoops of ice cream. So uh, that's for the first one of today. 
And I have a little thing. So I was thinking, I haven't done it yet, but I was thinking for those that waited, because you guys were so sweet to wait for me while I was down for a couple of days, I have a little something extra that I want to do to these three blocks. I thought it would be pretty cute. So um, I will go over that after this, um, after we go over the supplies. So like I said, that's Twin Popsicle. That's our first block. The next one, this is the one that has those special cut instructions I mentioned. So this is Ice Cream Bar. It is our 11th block. And let me get all the supplies here. So Ice Cream Bar, this one um, is on page 21. I think I said 30 on this. Let me see. Um, I think I said 30 and it's 20 in case I said that wrong. Twin Popsicle is on page 20 of the PDF. All right. And then for um, Ice Cream Bar, it's on page 21 of the PDF. And we are going to start with this pretty light blue. I really like this color. It's kind of a minty blue. So um, make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer. And we're going to start with this at six and a half by six and a half for our main fabric. And then we have a couple of applique pieces on this. So one of them is the vanilla ice cream. So think of like the vanilla part of your ice cream. Yummy, yummy. So that one, we it is a cream colored silky solid. And we're going to start with this at three by two and a half. I did back mine with fusible stabilizer. That's optional, but it helps to not have the blue show through. So think about that. It, this is such a light color. If you didn't back it with fusible stabilizer, you'd probably see the light blue from your main fabric. So it's a good idea to back this with fusible stabilizer, but you do you, you choose what works for you. So three by two and a half for the light cream and that's the ice cream part. And then we have this embroidery leather. Oh, this is super fun. It's kind of like a brown copper. This is really pretty. I really like this. So on this embroidery leather, it has this soft backing. You do not want to put fusible backing on this. Leave it just as it is. And we're going to start with this at three and a half by three and a half. And is the, it is the chocolate coating. I'm going to pretend it's root beer. <laughs> so uh, three and a half by three and a half for your embroidery leather. It's brown embroidery leather. And that will be the um, outer part of the ice cream stick. So uh, we are going to have batting with this. And since the final cut size four and a half by four and a half, we want batting that is five by five again, five by five for your batting. And for this one, we are going to quilt it. Oops, dropped my paper. <laughs> Sorry. We're going to quilt it with lines five. So that's that one that to me, it looks like an ice cream cone. I think that that's super cute. So uh, lines five and then in four by four, since our final cut size is four and a half by four and a half, we want our um, quilting designed to be four by four. And then this one does have special instructions, a couple of things. So I want to point out you have an option on this one. So you can, there's some people that don't like to sew on the buttons or not have buttons. Like if you wanted it to be a soft quilt that you're going to actually use versus having it, um, hang up on the wall, then you might not want to use the buttons and that's totally optional and they gave that option on this one so that there is another design there's one with um the way that i'm going to do it where i can use the button cute little stick button um or there's one that has the stitched it, it will stitch the the handle instead of using a button so look on the um the cd to be able to get the design that you want either the one that doesn't have the the um, the design on it or the one that um, does have it. it is totally up to you. I am going to use the one that does not have the stick on it so that I can put the button on. I hope that makes sense. So, and that isn't, these are in your embellishment kit. Um, my embellishment kit, I just have the parts that are going to stitch after the fact. So this one does have special cut instructions, which is kind of interesting because it is four and a half by four and a half. But what it is going to do is the last step, it will stitch um, a little like little bit of stitching on two of the corners so that we can put our pop rollers up against that and get it just right. So it must be something about the, the way that the ice cream. 
So it must be something about how the ice cream um, lays on the block or something. I'm not sure, but we will have trimming guides that we will stitch out and I'll go over how to use that as our trimming guide with our orange pop ruler. So that will be totally easy, no problem at all. And I'll go over each of the staff as always with uh, photos. So the last one for today is called Rainbow Popsicle. This one will be fun. Can you guess why I think this one will be fun? If you know me, you know I like the piecing projects and this one is kind of a piecing project. It's not kind of, it is. It looks like it is anyway. So I think this one will be really fun. Sorry, had COVID a few weeks ago and the cough is still lingering. All right, so on this rainbow popsicle, it is on page 23 of our PDF and we are gonna start with our main fabric it is the white on white cherries. How cute is that? And this is, we're gonna start with that at six and a half by six and a half. And you do wanna back this with fusible stabilizer. <coughs> Excuse me. So fusible stabilizer will help so that you're not seeing anything coming through. It helps with puckering to take away any puckering options. So you do want to back it with the main fabric with fusible stabilizer. So six and a half by six and a half. It is the white on white cherries. And then we, okay, so there are three pieces for our applique. The top is the light blue um, silky solid and this one is two and a half by two and a half for the first one I did back each of mine with fusible stabilizer you don't really need them on piecing projects I like them because I like the crispness it it just looks nice I think I'll be able to try my clover folding pen today that one of the gals got for me so that'll be fun I know a lot of people really like those so two and a half by two and a half for the top piece and then the middle piece is the creamy white silky solid and that one we are going to have it at three by three and I, like I said I did back these with fusible stabilizer three by three and then the bottom piece of the popsicle is like a coral um, a pretty coral silky solid in three by three also so just those three pieces and they will be piecing so we'll go over that but we start with one right side up and then piece the other two upside down I'll show you we'll, we'll go over all of that all right, and then uh, batting. Forgot my batting. So my batting is five by five because our final foot, final cut size is four and a half by four and a half. So batting five by five, and I'm using the Kimberbell Project Batting. It's really nice. I like it a lot. So um, then we are going to quilt it. So our quilting today is Food 5, which is the one with the milkshakes on it that we used for our milkshakes block. That will be super cute for this. So the popsicle, this is the rainbow popsicle. We are going to use Food 5 in 4x4. Four four. Since our final cut size is 4.5 by 4.5, we want a quilting design that is a half inch smaller. So 4x4, four four. no special cut instructions on this one, but it is a piecing project, so that will be fun. So I will go over the idea that I have to add to these blocks um, and that will be optional, completely optional. I'm going to use software. You could use your machine, I'm sure also, but we are going to go ahead and get started on these three blocks together. Hey everyone, so I wanted to show you a little something that you can choose to do if you prefer. So on this th the three popsicle blocks, I'm going to try all three in one hooping and I'm going to add a little touch to each one. Um, it will be a little stressful because there will be some overlapping fabric, so you could do two in one hooping, you could do each one in their own hoop. E either way, the outcome won't be a problem, it's just how you want to do it. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and open up and Brilliance Essentials. That's the software program that I am using and I'm an affiliate of it. If you are looking to get software, I highly recommend and Brilliance Essentials. And there is a link under this video um, that you can purchase it using my affiliate link. So the first thing it does is it opens to the last hoop you used. You can see down here at the bottom that I have it currently on my 10 by 16 hoop. I'm going to go to this preferences folder, click on that, and then I'm going to look for my 10 by 10 hoop. You can certainly use your 10 by 16 hoop if you have that. You could use an 8 by 12 hoop, um, whatever's going to work. I'm going to try the 10 by 10, I think. So if I go to this uh, compass button here and click on H, it will zoom into the hoop so that I can see all of the hoop. 
So we're going to start by bringing in the quilting design. So the first thing will be the quilting design. So the very first quilting design is the twin popsicle one and we are going to use uh, food four in a four by four. So I'm going to just close this up and here is food four and embroidery files block by block and I use Pez for my machine so click whatever format that your machine uses and then look for the 4x4 four four quilting design and double click on that and it brings it to the center of your hoop. Click on the stitching and then I'm just going to move it all the way over to the left side here to give myself as much room as possible. All right that's the first one and then the second one is the ice cream bar and for the ice cream bar we are using lines 5 so I'm going to go ahead to this merge stitch file button again and I'm going to look for lines five. So I'm going to close up this other quilting design and here's lines five and <clears throat> embroidery files. And so this one is an orange design. So you can see that there, there weren't the two options, the clear blue tiles or the block by block. Um, this is block by block, but this one doesn't come in a clear blue tiles version because you can see that the quilting goes into the seam so you would not want to use this one with clear blue tiles um, which we're not doing anyway I'm just pointing out um, why it looks different all right so then I double click on this and it goes to the center and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to move this one over you can see this um, the black little squares all around I'm going to use that as my guide to get it to the center and that looks really good maybe just a tiny bit over more all right and then that's the second one so the third one I'm going to go to merge stitch file and I'm going to close out this quilting design that we just used and I am going to look for um, on the rainbow popsicle we're going to use food five so food five is our quilting design embroidery files block by block is what we're doing for this entire pillow and then I use the Pez format and I am going to scroll down till I see the four by four, double click on that and it goes to the center. I'm going to click on that and move it down here to the bottom left. All right, so you can see it will be a little tight fit for sure. So we'll have to be careful about that. If you don't want that stress, like I said, use a bigger hoop or do less than one hooping. Either one will work totally fine. All right, so we have the three quilting designs. Now this is something I want to point out. If you decide that you want to um, join all of these together, which I'm going to do that. I'm, I am going to do that. Um, so I want to point out that each of these, two of them had a uh, white background fabric, but one, the ice cream bar, has a blue background fabric. So it's up to you. I think I'm going to use um, a clear, not clear, sorry, uh, cream quilting um, thread and corn silk from Hemingworth is the one that I'm using. This is from our sponsor, My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop. I think I'm going to use that on all three just so I can join them all and I like that look. Um, but since we do have one that is blue, you might choose to not join them all. And that is perfectly fine because you might want a blue quilting design on this. Since I'm adding to this block, I kind of want the quilting to be a little bit more subdued. But that's totally up to you. So um, winter blue is the one I think that they recommend um, with this um, background fabric. And again, totally up to you, um, whichever you choose. I'm pretty sure at this point I'm going to use corn silk for all three of mine. So I'm going to go ahead and make it so that I can join all of these together and have less steps. So if we were to leave it as is, it would join, but it would join um, more than I want it to because you can see we have default one blue twice and we have default two orange twice in each of the quilting designs. So you can see if I click on this, that's all of the first one. This is all of the second one and this is all of the third one. So it would join the blue and the oranges all together and then you wouldn't have those five steps. We want the five steps. So I'm going to go ahead and just change the quilting designs or the colors of it. So if we were to use all of the same quilting design on these three blocks, then it would be easier. You would just have to change the colors on one and then copy and paste. Um, but we're using a different quilting design on each one. And so it takes a little bit more work, but it'll take just a minute. 
So you can go ahead and leave the first one or the second one, it's up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the first one and two. So default one blue and default two orange on each of these. Um, so as you know, I'm sure the first one is the placement of the batting and the tack down of the batting. So I'm gonna leave that on each of them as the default one blue and default two orange. And then for the third one, that's the placement and then the tack down of the main fabric. So on those, I'm gonna go ahead and change the color just so it doesn't join with that batting. So I'm gonna click on the color and choose any color. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna choose dark aqua and say, okay. And then um, for the <clears throat> fourth one, the tack down of the main fabric, I'm gonna change it from default to blaze. It doesn't matter what color, you're just changing the color so that it's a different step. And then I'm gonna do that on all of them. So this is done for the first one. So the second one, same thing. This The third step, which is the placement of the main fabric, that one I'm gonna to change to the same color I used before, which you can see here, it's dark aqua. And it's just the first one that comes up for me. That's the easiest to do. Another way that you can do it is when you click on this color, instead of it having going, instead of it going to threads, you can go to palettes. And that shows the colors that are already in your project. Either way, because I just used the first color, so it doesn't matter. But that's another way that you can get to it. All right, so that's all done on the second one. And then on the third one, same thing. So here's the third quilting design down here. So we have the blue and the orange. We're going to go ahead and keep those. And then on the third step, this one, which is the placement of the main fabric, I'm going to click on that, click on the color, and I'm going to I'm going to go back to threads just since I'm used to using it that way. Um, dark aqua is the first one that comes up for me, and that's the same color as I used previously. And then for the tack down of the main fabric, I changed. I'm going to change that to blaze. All right. So now all three of those are done. In fact, we can go ahead and um, join them just to make sure that we have it all correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to utility, color sort, and it's been changed by 10 colors. So I'm gonna click new view. All right, and then we can just check it. So the placement of the batting, the tack down of the batting, the placement of the main fabric, the tack down of the main fabric, and then all of the quilting designs. And again, if you were not going to um, use the same thread color, you can either hit the stop button on your machine um, or just not join that. And to not join it, you would just change one of the colors um, so that they don't all join. I'm going to use all the same, so I'm going to keep it as is. So this new view is works perfectly for me. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. Now I'm going to go in and bring in the popsicles. So the first one, go to merge stitch file. And the first one is the twin popsicle. So I'm gonna close the quilting designs just so it's out of my way. Cause the, the um, software is asking me, where is this design that you want me to find? So two scoops bench pillow is where I have it on my desktop. All right, and then I click on Pez for my machine and the twin popsicle is right here. I double click on that and it goes to the center. So I am going to bring this to my first quilt block over here. And I want to do my best to merge to merge this in um, to the center. So you can see using these little black squares that I'm not at the center. And so I'm gonna use that to make sure to get it right at the center point of this block. And that's, that's centered. So you can see from the center guides here. All right, so that first one is great and done. Um, notice there's another default blue and orange in here. So I think we need to change on the quilting design actually, or on the, the popsicle. Let's go ahead and bring the rest of the popsicles in just to be sure. And actually we can check it and see if it's going to join them. Um, <clears throat> actually wouldn't need to do any more joining. Actually we shouldn't, we shouldn't do any more joining. So we can just leave the quilting design as is. Um, all right, so I'm going to bring in the second one. So merge stitch file. And then the second one is the ice cream bar. So again, I go to two scoops bench pillow embroidery files and I'm going to look for the ice cream bar. 
Now, notice right here, there's two of them. Remember I mentioned earlier that you can choose to stitch the stick if you prefer, and that one right here shows with the stick. I'm gonna use the button, so I want the one that doesn't have the, um, the stick stitching. So I'm gonna double click on that one, and it goes to the center. I'm gonna click on the middle. I'm gonna click anywhere to bring it over and again, I want to use, oh, this one's got those trimming guides, so this one will be easier to line up, actually. So you can see underneath the um, design, as you move it around, so see those the trimming guides right there? You just want to line those up with the edges of the block. All right, so that one is done and easy. So, all right, so we have the first two merged in. Now I'm going to bring in the third one, so I go to Merge Stitch File. <clears throat> and uh, two scoops bench pillow and now we are looking for the rainbow popsicle right there so double click on the rainbow popsicle it'll go to the center of your hoop click on that and bring it over and we are moving it to the center of this third block here excuse my husband <laughs> All right, so I am just going to center the popsicle into the middle of the block and um, using these guides. So this is, is easy to do. All right, so on the rainbow popsicle, we are going to visually center it. <clears throat> and this looks great. All right, so we have these three done and my recommendation would be to not um, color sort again you could but it's going to take a lot of brain activity to to get to figure out which ones are going to uh, join and which ones to change colors and so forth you could go through and change all of the colors on all the applique pieces and stuff or you could let it do it and put them all down at once I'm just going to leave it as is <clears throat> but I want to add to this so this is what I wanted to show you this is completely optional but if you wanted, you could add a little bit to these designs. So I'm going to just show you something. So if I click on this, uh, what does it say? Uh, create letter. So if I click on that, it comes up with this ABC. I'm going to change by clicking, highlighting the text right there and then <clears throat> typing in something else. So I'm going to type in delish and I'm going to hit return and it comes up as this word in a block font that is embedded as part of um, in Brilliance Essentials. But I loaded all of my embroidery fonts over the weekend to my um, in Brilliance Essentials. So all of these fonts will work with um, in Brilliance Essentials. So I'm pretty excited about that. I finally have all my fonts loaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and, so here's what I wanna show you. If you go through, so you know that you want the word small. So if you have one that's got like a big five inch, whatever, you obviously don't want that. Um, you would want really like a half inch, three quarter inch, and then probably still have to shrink it down. But so there's a few ways you can do it. If you have a document, I have a document of all of my um all of my embroidery fonts and where I got it and what sizes they come in and which ones I have in BX because BX works so well, well with them brilliance I can do all kinds of fun things with it so I really just use my BX fonts now so anyway I, it, you can go through here and look at them and go oh yeah this would look good or maybe this whatever and that works great for sure that that gives you a first visual but even after you've done that you'll want to see it in the embroidery software anyway so like um so let, let me just show you a couple so if i click delish and i know i want a smaller font so let's see here is a small celeste so <clears throat> that's not really the look i'm going for so you would just go go through your fonts and, and look at the different options that you have. Here's a three quarter inch and chubby cheeks. That's pretty cute, but I don't want this lower L here because I want something small that's gonna stand near my um, popsicle. And so I don't, I, I wanna be wary of things that are gonna um, 
turn change the the sizing and the dimension of where I want it so <clears throat> I'm just going to go through and look at a few of my options here here is Marsha script not the look I'm going for so you would just go through so this beneath your beautiful I really like this one and that is pretty darn cute that is really cute it's quite large so you'd have to shrink it down quite a bit but let, let's just take a look at this this isn't what I was going to use, but let's just take a look at it. So if what I'm going to do is I I moved it over to the first popsicle, and I'm going to use this. The, there's this blue button here up in the right-hand corner, and it allows me to angle it. That's funny. I didn't know it was going to change my, my hoop. Anyway, so I'm going to move this over. So you can see this is way too big, all right? But I can shrink it down. So if I hit the... I think it's the control button and then any of these corners it will shrink it from the middle so that I don't have to keep moving it around which that works really well all right that's pretty darn cute so it's a little harder to see with the <coughs> quilting behind it but um, remember that I'm going to use this cream quilting so that my word will stand out so that that's pretty darn cute so let me show you the one I was going to use. So what I can do, excuse my dog. So if I hit control C, control V, then I have two of them and just so that I can compare. So on this one, what I was going to use is Bella. Um, and that is a planet applique design. I don't remember if it comes up under P or let me see here. So I just loaded all these this weekend, so I don't really re remember how it works of, of finding them. It's not super easy to find them after because they're named. It's not by the name. It's by the brand, if I recall. So let's see. It must be how they have it set up. Um, anyway, so it's Bella. All right, so Bella in small. So see, that's pretty cute, too. So if I move this one and put this one over there just so I can get a visual. So the sizing is right. That's good sizing. All right, so one thing that's odd with this one is it says that it or it shows in all these different colors and you can see all the colors down here, but it's not there because they're not um it would show all the different steps if it was all these different colors and it's definitely not so it must be you can see this one color <clears throat> is highlighted so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and just click one of the colors so it shows the way that it is going to stitch out so um, <clears throat> I'll probably do it in a, a gray or I haven't decided what color but um, <clears throat> so that's one thing too is I'm not going to join these again but if you wanted them all to be the same, <clears throat> you could join them or you could keep them as separate, separate color so that they don't join. But like I said, I am not going to join all of these together again because of all the applique pieces, um, which you can work around that. It's just it, it'll be easier to just leave it as is. But anyway, so there's this delish or there's this delish. I think I'm going to go with my original plan, which is the Planet Applique Bella. I think that's really cute. But this Beyond Beautiful, I think it was called Beyond Beautiful, Beneath Your Beautiful, Beneath Your Beautiful. Um, this is also designs by Juju Design, and that's really cute too. But I'm going to use my first one, which is the Planet Applique Bella. Okay, so... Um, that's my first one. I'm going to add another wording. So again, I go to this create letters and it goes to the center. It uses the last one used. So that Bella is still up here. I'm going to highlight the, the ABC and I'm going to type yum. You could do yummy, but um, this is a smaller um, popsicle. So I, I've decided on yum and I want to point something out. If you use the word yum or yummy, you have to be wary of that Y, that Y that comes down here that will mess up um, where it goes unless it is under, if you don't mind it being over your applique, that's fine then. So, so you would just take it and move it like we did before and you can see it would go over the applique. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But obviously this is way too large and I don't want to use the same one again anyway. 
So again, I would go through here and look at different um, fonts that I have and see what I think would be cute. So here is a fun font that's very little and a half inch. So it's kind of wide, but actually it fits really well. I'm actually going to try Hey Pretty Girl. So Hey Pretty Girl I found, it is a Designs by Juju, and they all come up as DBJJ and then the, the wording of the font. So Hey Pretty Girl in a half inch. So you can see it's kind of like a little block style, and that's pretty cute. I like that. I think I'm going to angle it just a tad more. There we go. All right. It's harder to see when it's not highlighted with because of the quilting. But so that is a very cute one. I like that. I like yum. If I did yummy, it would be longer. And you just have to be worried that this is um, our, our, what is it? Our placement and tack down of our batting, which means that our cut line will be here, but our stitch line will be here. So you just wouldn't want it going past this. You want it to be smaller for the smaller popsicle. So I'm using Hey Pretty Girl. And another cute one was grade school. I saw that, that was a cute one. All right, so I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna go back to this Create Letters and I highlight the text and I'm gonna write Sweet and hit Return. All right, so sweet, this one we're gonna bring down here. And so we're going to use that blue and to be able to angle it. And this is the font I used before. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the font just so that it's different. And I found a cute one that worked really fun for this. Um, it was called Sweet, no, sorry, it's called Willy. Willy, let me see if I can find that. Oh, so some are DBJJ, some have numbers. Uh, so I'm going to go down here to find Willie. So all you would do is you would go through your different fonts and see like this June apple was super cute. I, I played with that one a little bit. There's a lot of really fun, cute fonts that would work for... Th these are just very simple words. Um, let's see, Willie... There's Willie in a half inch. All right, so I want to point something out on, on this one. So if what I'm going to do is I am going to um, zoom in because I want to make some minor changes to this. There's a way to do it with this compass as well. But all right, so if what I'm going to show you here is if I click on, so see how this S and W are, are good, but I feel like this is too far away. So if I click on that green um, diamond that's in the center, I think it's supposed to be a square, but since we've got it angled, it's a diamond. Um, and then I click on the bottom part. So notice I clicked on that middle square, which gave me more options. And then I click on this bottom square and I can move everything over a little bit. All right, so that just made it so I can move all of the um, next letter. So I'm gonna do it on this next E as well. So I click on that middle green uh, square and then on this bottom triangle and I'm just going to move it over a little bit just so it's a little bit closer. I think the T is fine where it is but those two E's I want it a little bit closer together and then I can zoom back out. I can click on the compass and click on H for the hoop and that looks good. I like that. I'm going to bring it down a little bit closer to my popsicle and center it. All right, so that's all good. So as I mentioned, you could um, join these three colors if you're gonna use the same, but then you'll have to fix the, um, the applique pieces. And I've shown in other videos that you can change the colors or you can give it a job um, so that it's an applique piece so that they, some of them won't join because you don't want everything to join on this. Um, but I'm just going to leave it as is and hit the go button on my machine since we've got so many different parts of this. So there's my three um, popsicle blocks and I added cute little words to each one. Um, that delish is a little big. I might make that a tiny bit smaller. So again, I hit that control button and I bring it down just a bit. 
and then just move it so it's not overlapping with my popsicle. Maybe just a tiny bit up more. So just play around with it until you get it exactly how you want. There's lots of fun fonts to work with. Um, lots of different words you could use. Whatever you wanted to personalize it. If you want to personalize it, you absolutely don't have to. These are adorable blocks as is. Um, but I've decided I'm going to just add a little something because it gives us an opportunity to learn and try different things. So here's my three blocks. I'm all ready to go. So um, let's have some fun.
My ice cream is melting. So I wanted to tell you my shirt today. It is a great shirt. I love this one. Um, I have to wear zip up shirts for a while. And so zip up shirts uh, are fun. You can put something fun on the lapel and then something on the back. So I will add a photo. It's my storm shirt. I've heard that it's hard to find that design now, um, but I will add a link if I have it. Mm. And then this, um, monogram I love this monogram this is super fun so I will add information under this video about uh, my shirt today mm -hmm. 